This study today is titled The Present Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're taking a text from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. My God, this is due time. He says that this truth of God is to be testified now. That this is the due time at this present time. That there is one God and one mediator between God and my kind of human being. The man Christ Jesus. That he gave himself a ransom for all. Says that we were kidnapped and he came to ransom us, to deliver us Amen. by himself, not another. He didn't send someone else. He says he gave himself a ransom, not for certain people, for all people, everyone. And so this is the present Christ. This one that is and was and is to come the unremovable. Who is he? Hear what Apostle Peter wrote concerning him in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Amen. Hallelujah. You know that you don't know. If you know, you want to put you in remembrance. In case we have forgotten that there is one God. That one God gave us the Bible. Now, say he is the mediator of himself. God is a spirit. That means you can't see him. Now, how do you deal with this spirit? Say, by Christ, by his word. Pastor Peter says, I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of this truth, this present truth, so that you'll be established in the present truth. The truth that you must receive to be saved. If our idea of God is imagination, then we are in a bubble. We are living a life that is not true. Then we are supposed to serve God in truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That there is present truth, which is the present Christ. Who he spoke for that? Listen to what Apostle Peter wrote in the same Second Peter chapter one, verse nineteen to twenty-one. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise. In your heart. Amen. Amen. It says that this truth is present. So you do where you take heed to it. Now if we don't take heed to the scriptures, we are not doing well. If we don't know the scripture is the present truth, that is the present word of God, that God is present and is among us by his word, then we say we're not doing well. That 
you should take heed to this light. You know, the Lord said, I am the light of the world. Anyone that follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now it says the true light is come. What light? The light of the word of God. It needs to enter us, to shine in our heart. Since our heart is darkened by ignorance, that this light comes in and gives us understanding. He gives us light in our mind. We begin to see the present Christ, that God wants us to see him. In verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. That is, the scripture cannot be interpreted privately. It is someone just take the scriptures and walk away. That is private interpretation. It says that we should come to the scriptures, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Verse 21, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men, speak, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. There is only one God and one mediator between man and God the man Christ Jesus, that God gave us his word, that it is God himself that inspired the scriptures so that the scripture will be mediating between us and him. There is no need to go through a medium. Since that when we come to the scriptures, we should know it's not of private interpretation. It did not come privately from men. It came from God. And that is why it is applicable to you and to me. You should not say, okay, I is coming from that man or that woman. No, it came from God that owns our soul. The God that says, come to me, everybody. It's saying to you and to me that you have access to this God directly. Don't go into privacy or someone telling you, come, uh, you need to pass through me. No, that is private interpretation. He says that the scripture did not come by private interpretation, neither can it be understood through private interpretation. You must come to the scriptures to understand the scriptures. And this is the reason why he gave the word to us. Now listen to what he said through his servants in Acts. Let's read it in Acts chapter 11, verse 19 to 21. Now, they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as the Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Serene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great Number believed and turned unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. It says that through the persecution of Stephen, and when they were persecuted in Jerusalem, the believers who believed the word of God scattered abroad. And so they traveled to different places, and then they preached the word. They were speaking of him, to people, and then they preach the word to them. And the scripture tells us that the word they were preaching to them is the Lord Jesus. That is what is written. And so it says that every scripture that we read in the Bible came directly from God. Now, when the spirit of the scripture came upon human beings, 
even his disciples, they went about preaching the word, telling people concerning the Bible, as you are hearing today, that the word of God is the present Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And that is the message. Cannot be changed. God commanded it to be preached in all generations. That this is the only mediator between God and human being. The unremovable Christ, the unchangeable word of God. And that the present Christ is the Bible. That if we don't receive this, if we don't understand this, we are serving God in imagination. We are not dealing. Says that the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed. Can you see? So, he said a great number of people believed the Lord and turned to the Lord. So, God wants us to turn to his word. These were people who perhaps were worshipping some other things. They have some other things in their mind. But when the word was preached to them, they believed. That's what God is expecting from us to believe. To believe what? His word. To turn to the word of God. That God came to deliver us. God came to redeem us. To ransom us. Say he has given himself a ransom for all. To be testified in this time. So today, we preach the word as who? As the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Say so you do well, you take heed to it. You do well, that means when you take to the word of God, that the word of God is indeed the word of God given to us in the Bible, then you are doing well. You are doing what God commanded. You are doing what is right. You know? There was one time Paul came to a place in Athens. Let's read that in Acts chapter 17. Acts 17, verse 22 and 23. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things, Ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. He says he came to Athens, and he saw that they were superstitious, too superstitious. That is, if we are worshiping God, and this God is in our imagination, we just imagine something and we conjure anything, that's superstition. And to the point they had an inscription to the unknown God. He then said to them, this unknown God is whom I am preaching, so that you may know him. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. He sent his word. He gave us his word in this due time, in these last days. We didn't know him before. Though he created all things, by the word of the Lord, where the heavens made, everything was created, we are created by him. Now, Say the creature, we didn't know him. But in the due time, according to the plan of God, he now revealed to us the creator, the maker. And how did he do it? Through his word. And so that we will leave dumb idols, so that we will come to know him. How can we know him? Through his word. As he said, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth. The true what? The true Christ. And the true Christ will set you free. Amen. For if the Son of God 
make you free, you'll be free indeed. Yes. He is the true son of God. Who is that one? The word, the word of God. That Paul says, the one that you are calling the unknown God is the word of God. The one the world is calling the unknown God is Christ. Jesus Christ can be known and he should be known. Says that anyone who now walk in darkness is condemned already. That is the condemnation. That the light is come. Men love darkness rather than the light. Because their deeds were evil. God wants us to come out of imagination. God came to deliver us from darkness and bring us into the light. Into his true light. That the true light of God is the word of God. Amen. You need to see him indeed. That we should see God in the face of Jesus Christ. We should look unto him. The author and the finisher of our faith. Paul says, the one that you are calling the unknown God is known. He has revealed himself unto us, the apostle says. That and we know that the Son of God is come, and He has given us an understanding that we may know Him. You know, He said that we may know Him, and then when you know Him, we are in Him. This is the true God and eternal life. So, God wants us to move from the unknown to the known. That there is present truth. You know the. By worshippers who conjure by in their imaginations and started worshipping imaginations. The servant of God, Elijah, the Lord said to him, Gather all of them to Mount Carmel. Let's prove the matter. And the God that answered by fire shall be God. And the God that is present will be the true God. An absent God is a lie. Present God is true. And then he said, the bad priest or prophet shouted and called and called for hours, cutting themselves. Of course, you know, it's a lie. If he was present, he would show up. So because the bar is not true, he could not show up. Now, the man of God, Elijah, prayed and said, oh Lord, show to these people you are God. And then before he finished speaking, fire came and then consumed everything. Then he shows to them that he is the present God. Amen. A God that is not present is not God. It's a fake God. See, the word of God is present. He says it's a very present help in time of trouble. The word of God is present. He's with us. He said that you should take to this present Christ. He will deliver you from every evil. The first evil is to deliver us from superstitions, from imagination. And that God is answering us today Amen. by fire. Amen. My goodness, Lord, your heart will be on fire. The, the word of God brings the reality of God to the bear in our mind. So you do well, you take heed to this sure word of prophecy. As that light, as that truth, and it will arise in your heart. Amen. That God is known. If God is not known, then we are finished. Why are we existing there? Who is keeping us? Who is supplying us? Now, how if he is not known and then we say it's going to come up someday in the future, don't you see we are deceived? How will your God come someday? Then how are you living? Don't you see who are we worshipping then? Who are you serving? Jesus says, if you continue my word, you are my disciples indeed. You are serving the true God. God came to us in the man Christ Jesus. The word of God was made flesh. 
so that he will show to us that the word of God is that present God, the true God. Say, so destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. All that to prove to us that the scripture cannot be broken. He is true. And he did so, and then gave the word to us in writing. Let's hear it in the same Acts 17, verse 30 and 31. And in the times of this ignorance, God winked at, that is, God overlooked, means his past. Ignorance is gone. We cannot ignorantly worship God today. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Repent is the message. Change your heart. That is why everyone who ever come to the knowledge of the truth, whether in the past or today, think of Job. Job says, I was hearing about you, but now my eyes see at you. You are present. Then what happened? I repent in dust and ashes. That is what brings about repentance. Once you come to discover that the word of God is the present truth, you will repent. Means you will change your heart. You change your mind. I say, who has bewitched me? What have I been worshipping? Why do they say that you cannot see him? Say in the days of ignorance, in the times past, God has wiped that one away. He took it away. And then show us the truth. How did he do that, verse 31? Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he had raised him from the dead. He raised him. Why did God raise Christ from the dead? So that we will serve the living God. He is not God of the dead, he is of the living. Why did God raise Christ? He raised him up so that you will see that the word of God is living. It's alive. It's not dead. It's alive. We must come out from the dead thinking and say, where is he? Where can we find him? He's present. Say God has appointed a day he's going to judge the whole world on the basis of this man. Receiving him, you will be saved. Rejecting him, the person is condemned. He is the man Christ Jesus, the only judge of the living and the dead. He is the Bible. We preach him. He said, when you believe the God that gave us the Bible said you have said to his seal that God is true because he is God. He says, I am God. I don't know any other one. If we refuse this God, he said, there's not another God. That the God of the Bible is true and present. He was present with them in the wilderness 40 years, the scripture says, and they grieved him because of evil heart of unbelief, and they perished in the wilderness. Now he says that he has appointed a day. Only God knows that day. The day of judgment. And that the judgment will be on the basis of accepting this present Christ or rejecting him. There is not another judgment coming than what you are hearing. It says those who receive him will be justified as Abraham. Those who reject him will find out that he is the true God and the present God, the one that took care of all of them in the wilderness 40 years is the word of God. He was present. Those who didn't believe, they perish. 
those who believe like Caleb, Caleb said, look, he has kept me alive these 45 years. I'm alive. My goodness, Lord. Jesus says, anyone that believe in me, though he were dead, he shall live. Anyone that believe in me, and he shall not taste of death. Believest thou this? I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the condemner. I am the justifier. Who? The God of the Bible. What does it want uh, from us? Faith to believe. How? Through preaching. Says those who were scattered by reason of the persecution of Stephen, they went everywhere preaching the word. My goodness, Lord. For so he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. They went everywhere preaching the word. What a good news. They preached Christ. They preached the word. Who changed it? The devil? Who changed the message? You can't change it. The angel told John, this is everlasting gospel. The gospel of the word of God, he said this gospel must be preached to all nations before the end will come. So that no one will have excuse. Hear it. The present Christ is the word of God. He came and became a human temporarily. That was not the present one. That was because of evil had not believed that God now made his word a human so that we will know and believe that he is living. He is active. He is powerful. There is nothing he cannot do. He can astray your mind, your soul, your spirit, your bone. He can do all things Amen. greater than anyone. And now, since God has set a day to judge the world in righteousness by this man. Righteousness is not practice. Righteousness is by faith. You hear people talking, oh, I'm righteous, I behave this way. No, the righteousness of faith speaketh on this wise. Don't say who is going to bring Christ down from heaven. Or go to the deep and bring him up again. The word is near you. Even in your mouth. The Holy Scriptures you are quoting. What is remaining? If you believe in your heart. The Lord Jesus. And confess him with your mouth. You shall be saved. Amen. This is the righteousness of faith. Say God is going to judge the whole world. In righteousness. By this man. Whom he ordained is a spiritual man. It's not natural. He will judge all humans by this one. That there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He is the Son of God. Amen. The Son of God is not flesh and blood. The Son of God is the Word of God. The Holy Spirit gave us his word. He said, this is my body. Take it, all of you. They said, is he going to give us his flesh to be eating? Said, the flesh profited nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are living. Eat it. Eat the truth of the Bible. That the truth of the Bible is my son. If you eat him, then if you eat the son, the father will make his abode. We will come in. You eat his flesh, you drink his blood. Where the body is, the spirit will come. He is complete. And so he said he has given assurance God has committed all judgment to his son. That what you want to do to God, do it to the son of God. If you want to honor God, honor Christ. You want to honor God, honor his word. Honor the Bible. Promote him. Speak of him. Amen. As God speak of him say if we have the same spirit of faith we believe so we speak 
So if you have the faith of God, the spirit of faith of God in you, you will speak of his word the same way he spoke of him, that this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear you him. Amen. Hear the sound of the Bible. Hear the words of the Bible. Is the word of the Holy Spirit it didn't, didn't come privately. The word of the Lord came to the prophet. The word of the Lord came to the apostles. The same word is coming to you through preaching today. Amen. Come, he went to Cyprus, went everywhere by his disciples. He said they went everywhere preaching the word. That is how he's going around the whole world. Comes through preaching. If the spirit enter you, you'll be preaching him also. Everybody. Then we fill the whole world with the knowledge of the God of the Bible as the water covered the sea. Mm -hmm. What a beauty. We're going to pray to him. I say, oh God, let the present truth enter me. Amen. Any lie they have told me, all superstition must die today. Oh God, take away superstition from me. Take away every unknown God from me so that I know the only true God. The God of the Bible, let it be formed in me. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Almighty Father, Savior, Jesus, eternal Father, Spirit, Father, Father, we pray unto you, O God, Almighty Savior, Father, the one and only one, the Father, living Father, Spirit Father, that so loved us, you gave us the Bible so that we don't perish, but have eternal life. That the eternal life is to know you, the only true God. And Jesus, whom you gave to us, even the Bible, for you sent your word to heal us and deliver us from every destruction and save our soul and keep us um, so that we don't perish but have everlasting life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. We thank God for that moment of uh, hearing his word. As you've heard, our title tonight was The Present Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray, even as we have heard, that uh, there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That uh, that man, Christ Jesus, is uh, the present truth that God wants us to be established in. So he's one, he's the one God has given to us that uh, by him uh, we can be established as well. That we are to take heed to the word until so the word arises in our hearts. So let's pray God establish me in the present truth so that this word we take root in me, I'll be rooted and grounded in this word so that uh, your truth continually will be in me in Jesus' name. Almighty and ever living Father, we pray to you, God of our soul, that you make me to continue in this light, in this wonderful light you give to us that shine it in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star rises in my heart in every one of us my goodness lord let it be so that your truth will arise in our hearts